We can now bring in Daniel Dawes, author of 150 Years of Obamacare and Associate Professor at Morehouse School of Medicine. Thank you very much for joining us here on France 24. What do you take away from what happened in the Supreme Court earlier today? Thank you. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. It's good to be with you. Uh, in, in terms of what uh, went on today, it wasn't surprising. I think for me, you know, having looked back at the case law that uh, Justice Kavanaugh has issued while as an appellate court and now a justice on the Supreme Court. He's always been one who was weary of uh, judicial attempts to undermine health care access and quality, as well as those uh, judicial opinions that would interfere with the market. So if he's consistent with his record um, and precedent, then that isn't surprising in terms of what he stated today. Now, the question is, uh, will he bow to pressure, being a newer member of the Supreme Court, uh, bow to pressure from his conservative base? That's what we will wait to see. Now, we are only going to get a ruling uh, to this decision at the end of June. What, for argument's sake, if the, if the Supreme Court does strike down a certain part of Obamacare, what does Joe Biden do then? Because he wants to expand on Obamacare. He does, absolutely. So it, we'll have to see what... Um, the electorate provides us in terms of the Senate. Will the Senate retain, um, will Republicans retain control of the Senate, or will Democrats eke out a narrow victory and give him what he needs to make some piecemeal uh, attempts at uh, health reform? What I believe he will do is he's going to press that rewind button on health policies from the Trump administration in general. And then you're going to see an unwinding of many of those um, regulations, sub regulations. Um, and, and executive orders that were intended to undermine the Affordable Care Act. I'll, I think you'll see that happening. That may be his best strategy moving forward, because legislatively, I don't think you'll have that opportunity unless, you know, as a, as a former member of the Senate, along with Kamala Harris, um, if they can apply that legislative pressure uh, to get enough Republicans to side with them, uh, I don't see much uh, happening there in terms of expansions of health reform. And what does Joe Biden want to do exactly when, when he's talking about expanding on Obamacare? Sure. So, you know, there was an effort back in the Obama administration to include what we call the public option. Uh, that was, a, as you might recall, it was a very controversial pub public policy because it would essentially allow for um, the government to have its own health insurance plan within the health insurance marketplaces that were created by Obamacare. But there was pushback by the insurance companies, uh, by Republicans as well, who said, no, that would undermine uh, these companies from operating within that marketplace. Well, what Joe Biden wants to do is to now come back and say, well, let me narrowly tailor that uh, public option and allow individuals who have been um, in or living in states where they have not expanded Medicaid, which is a federal program for low income individuals, uh, to be able to uh, at least apply for coverage. Uh, for those who are 60 years old, uh, between 60 and 65, who are usually early retirees who have been discriminate, discriminated in employment and can't access health care services because they usually have higher rates of pre existing conditions, he would allow them also. Uh, to uh, benefit from a public option. So that's a major issue. You'll also see that he wants to expand reproductive health, right? And that's a part of the um, unwinding of what has taken place under the Trump administration. I think you'll also see with his health reform uh, and health policy agenda, a robust health equity agenda. It's the most robust health equity agenda that we've ever had from a presidential candidate and now president-elect. Daniel Dawes, thank you very much for joining us on uh, France 24 today.